Giving a type 2 diabetic insulin is like giving an alcoholic another glass of wine, hoping that a little extra alcohol will solve the problem. It's the high insulin that caused the problem. Fortunately, it gets even more dramatic. Whereas you put a patient on insulin therapy, and look, from the moment of treatment, insulin dose over several months goes up, and the body weight starts to climb, all while, based on the metrics being used, the amount of food being consumed is dropped. Where over these few months, they appear to be eating less, and yet they're gaining fat. Now that might seem impossible if you strictly adhere to the laws of thermodynamics, which I do, actually. But I'm not ignorant enough to think that the human body is a closed system. My body is not the universe. Case in point, what few people realize is that the moment a diabetic is put on insulin therapy, whether they are type 1, which I'm not really talking about, or type 2, metabolic rate will slow. In type 1 diabetics, it's dramatic, where insulin will slow, the metabolic rate will slow by over 20% in a day once they go on insulin therapy. It's less dramatic in a type 2 diabetic, but even still, by dumping more insulin in the system, metabolic rate will slow, which is one of the mechanisms whereby insulin is able to tell the body how more lethal than just having too much body fat is the fact that substantial evidence suggests that when you are pushing the body further into hyperinsulinemia, you are increasing cancer mortality. In fact, you're about doubling it. So when the type 2 diabetic is put on insulin therapy, the likelihood of dying from cancer, which is modest but getting more common all the time, is twice as high, about 90% in this study, about twice as high as it should be. And then heart disease, where the type 2 diabetics who have to take on the highest insulin doses, even if they have perfect glucose level, they are three times more likely to die from heart. So giving the type 2 diabetic insulin is a wonderful way to make sure their blood glucose levels are perfect, but killing them faster, which is not the solution to the NHS's problem.